we said that we need to have a grammar that specifies what tags we can have, what attributes they can have, and what entities are allowed. So we've talked about the elements, the tags. Let's talk about the attributes, and then entities are going to be real easy. I'm going to talk about that in 30 seconds total. Okay, uh, attributes. So, duh, duh, duh. skipping down to the attributes part. Oops. Um, okay, so uh, attributes here is a standard way of doing things. We had height, maybe, can be PC data, and then an attribute list uh, for the node heights. And we want to be able to call it units. And this would mean units can be C data, not PC data, C data. So if you have an ampersand somewhere in your units, well, I don't know why you'd have that, but it will be literally an ampersand of characters. Okay. Um, so, yeah, and then we can go ahead and include, and it turns out in this case, we can provide a default value. If they didn't have a height, if they had a height tag and they didn't put a units attribute in it, We'll default it to the value feet, so uh, that people could still go ahead and say height of something, then units equal meters. Um, but if they leave it off, it defaults to feet. Okay, so great. That's showing us how to have a an attribute with a default value. Uh, so we use again uh, less bang at list than the name of the node and then the attribute inside of it. Um, some of the different things we can do, we went ahead and had the default value like feet. If we don't have default value, uh, I can go ahead and say required, hash required, meaning it's required and there is no default value. The user has to provide that to be a, to meet our grammar. Um, and then here's a name that's not very good, imp hash implied, meaning optional and there's no default provided. Yeah, so that's a little bit odd. Even more odd is fixed. Uh, fixed means I'm going to go ahead and list the one value that must be there and no choices in that. Uh, and they can't leave it off. They have to include it. This is the uh, I hate my users writing in this language and I'm going to force them to write a lot of stuff rather than have a default value. Okay, so I uh, wouldn't worry too much about that. I think the default value is the most interesting one and requ hash required if there is no reasonable default. Um, you can also go ahead and use the OR operator. Okay, so we can combine these with the OR operator. So here's another example, at list height units has to be one of these two. And here's an, the, an example of the required, you must mention one or the other. Okay, there isn't a default value. So, um, da, 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 da. There's a little thing, sometimes you want to go ahead and have, uh, you want to say, hey, I, the value of this thing should be the an ID attribute somewhere else in the document. So there's a special thing, ID ref for that. Um, that's a pretty obscure use case. Don't worry about that. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, so the other thing here, there's a name token that just requires you to be a valid name. So uh, and if I had an element w visit, then I can have an attribute uh, primary keyword. It's going to be the attribute inside the w visit tag, and its value should be a name token. Okay, so no white space. Certain characters are omitted. Um, okay, again, not a huge, huge thing. Okay, so yeah, basically, you can go ahead, and I think this sort of is the you know, a canonical example, um, and just knowing that there's either a default value or required. Those are the two important ones to know. So, uh, by the way, you can have several attributes here. You can have an attribute list height, and then you have something about units, and then you can have, if there was another attribute, you could just say some more stuff before your final close angle bracket. Uh, just looking in here, you have things like at list year built. The era is the name of the attribute and has to be one of these two and it's required, no default there. Okay, um, year destroyed. By the way, this is an example of where uh, DTDs are a little bit weak. I, I want to generalize this. I want to say, hey, whatever the year built grammar is, it should be the same for year destroyed. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't do that. But Okay, 
Uh, to have an example, here's main image can have a file that's going to be C data and it's required to provide a value for that. Why C data rather than PC data? Ah, because I might have something like an ampersand or less than as part of the file name. So it makes sense for that uh, file to be a, a C data and definitely not PC data. Uh, that way we can directly put the file name in there and not have to sort of, oh, my file name has an ampersand in it, so I need to put an ampersand AMP semicolon in this attribute here. Um, okay. Uh, here's, oh, H and W both as well. You know, someone where I wish there was a way to just talk about, hey, it has to be a numeric sort of thing, but um, maybe DTDs don't provide that and we're kind of stuck with a, a looser constraint than we'd really like to make here. Okay, um, I said that within, can I do this within 30 seconds? Entities. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and say, hey, I want to make a new entity, such, you know, entity things like ampersand, so I give an example, wonders the WOW, the ampersand WOW, I want that to render as wonders, oh, I'm going to write single quote, uh, the world as an EM. Okay. So now I can go ahead and say something like this, and when it renders, we'll go ahead and get this thing here. So you might use that, uh, an entity, sort of, think of the entity as something that's going to be typeset as one typographic unit. It might be a bunch of letters, but like a logo or a motto or something like that. And you want to define it once and then be able to use it in many places, kind of like a, a variable. So there's other types of entities, general entities, this is the only example I really care about. Um, so, good. Now we're left with a nagging question. I'm not going to make a separate video. I'm going to put it right here. When should I use tags and when should I use attributes? I mean, I can have information both ways. I want to have talk about the height of a wonder. Um, so here, here's several ways I could do this. Uh, let's just go through and I'll talk about what I like and don't like about these various things here. I could have a wonder tag and then have height equal 37 feet as an attribute for the entire wonder tag. Okay, that's that's not too bad. Um, the one thing I don't like about this is the 37 space feet. If I'm processing that, I need to pull out that string and then I need to start doing like substrings to pull out, hey, what part are the digits that I need to the numeral that I need to turn into a number and what part of the units, you know, look for a space, separate that. Uh, the whole idea of having XML is to structure your data already and not have to do this extra parsing, just take a flat string and figure out where the information lies within it. So I don't like it for that reason. XML, should, we should be able to do better with XML to structure our data. Okay. So I could have a wonder and inside the wonder I could have a height tag, which I think is what uh, how how all these other examples are, and that's how it is in the file. And then within the height tag, I could say 37 feet. Um, it fails for the same reason I don't like parsing this 37 feet out of these two. I don't mind the wonder. Within the wonder tag, we talked about all the different information about a wonder. That was the purpose of the wonder tag. So I don't mind heights being a sub-tag inside here rather than this. Um, so in fact, I kind of prefer B over A, but I still don't like the fact that I have to do this parsing in B. Okay, what about a height tag where I have a inside here, I'm gonna to have to separate that 37 feet, I'm gonna have a measure tag inside the height tag. Uh, and that's where I'll stick the 37 inside a measure tag. And then to talk about the measure, I'll have units equal feet. And that way I could go ahead and have units equal feet or I could have units equal meters. Okay, well, I like the fact that now the 37 and the feet are clearly easy to decompose and grab. Um, it's a separate thing I don't like about this uh, from Java 1 uh, or introductory programming. Don't keep redundant information around. Don't keep derived data around without a really good reason to for performance issues. Uh, so if this is 37 feet, which is 11.8 meters, you know, one thing I don't like about this is the moment I list that same height in two different units, it means I could go and take this file and re-edit it to make this 110.8. And now I have a file that is like corrupt in some sense. The data does not correspond to anything that could feasibly even be real. Okay. And I don't like that. I don't like data formats that it'd be nice if my data format said you can't put something that is not uh 
you know, not physically possible. Okay, you can't physically be 120, 110 meters and 37 feet. So, yeah, I don't like that. If we only allowed one or the other, then I might have the wrong height in there, but at least I can't have a file that is, you know, defying the laws of physics. I could just have some wrong data. But, okay, um, so I don't like repeating that, um, but I do like separating out the unit from the, the measure, but I don't like allowing multiple measures. I shouldn't allow multiple measures. No, not be allowed. Okay, here's about a height with a feet, a feet tag and a meters tag. Ooh, that, I like that less than C. I prefer C over that. If I have to hard code feet, I have to hard code meters. I'd rather have, we saw how with attributes I can say, hey, the units has to be one of the following two things or three things or five things using the OR operator. So I would use that um, to enforce my selection of meters or feet rather than saying, yeah, there's a feet tag and a meters tag, and I'm going to make new tags if I want to introduce new units. Um, and I don't like the fact that I can mention it twice. So what about this? Height measure equal 37, and then have a unit subtag feet. Okay, well, okay. Well, and now I can sort of say I can define this so that it can only be one thing inside there, and you must include units, and you must have a measure attribute. I can go ahead and do all that sort of stuff. There'd, no default allowed here, it's a required sort of thing. Um, okay, so that, well, you know, getting better. Uh, let's compare E with F. Uh, height, same thing, except this measure equal 37, I pull it inside here rather than as an attribute. So I had it as a subtag rather than attribute. That's, I think, one of the biggest questions when you're designing XML. Gosh, I have some information. I could make it a tag nested inside, or I could make it up part of the attribute. Hmm. That's a little bit of a head scratcher. Uh, which of these do I prefer and why? Okay. Uh, I'll come up with an answer. Let's just look at so that's E and F. I, these are getting closer. I, you know, um, so far, I think F is my favorite out of these we've seen. Um, I could go ahead and do the complement, so E and G are both complementary ways. They each have one inside the tag and one as an attribute, except I just swapped E and G. Um, and I think the point that I want to get to is that out of E and G, I have a clear preference. One of these I like to swap, the other one I really dislike it. Um, I'll give you a hint, the one I like is G, and we'll come back about why. Okay, so... I think my favorite so far is G. I haven't totally explained why, but so far my favorite is G. Um, what about H? H is similar to having the measure and units inside, except we don't actually mention the measure tag. I kind of prefer that. You already told me this was a height tag. And so I know it's going to contain a height, so you don't need to say the measure of the height and the units of the height. I like having 37 not nested further. There's no, re re no need to nest that further. We know that we're sitting with the height. And then the units, uh -huh. okay. Uh, so I, I like not having that measure tag. I kind of like this. I is gonna be the culmination. It's the one that I like the best. Height units equal feet. Hey, here's the height tag. The thing inside the height tag is the information, 37. That's the information. But now you're like, hey, 37 and what units? The units are information about the information. Hey, this this data, 37, what's the data? Uh, tell me something more about how to interpret that. Ah, okay, so here's Barlin's rule of thumb. Put data inside the tag. Use attributes for metadata. This is how to interpret the stuff that's inside the tag, okay? So here's another example. Uh, we had the name, for the wonders of the world, we had the name tag. And we had the name Greek, sometimes we had it in Greek, sometimes we had it in uh, English, we could have it in German, we could have it in whatever language. Um, so really, it's the information was the actual name, and then we had the attribute language that told us how to interpret that. Oh, yeah, this is, you know, this, this is the name. By the way, this is the name in the German language. Tell me about that. So put data in the tag and put metadata as an attribute. Okay. So... Uh, I'll leave that as the uh, the takeaway. Data in tag. Uh, 